Hey guys, and welcome to the Chemistry Shack. In this video, we're finally going to make silicon tetrachloride. I've been promising to make this video for a long time, but now I'm finally going to show you guys how to make silicon tetrachloride. Silicon tetrachloride, or SiCl4, is an interesting molecule because it is a compound of silicon that is liquid at room temperature. Silicon tetrachloride is also interesting because it exhibits the non-metal characteristics of silicon. Without getting into too much detail, silicon is a metalloid, which means it can sometimes behave as a metal and sometimes as a non-metal. In the case of silicon dioxide, also known as sand, silicon acts as a metal and forms ionic bonds with oxygen. However, in the case of silicon tetrachloride, silicon acts as a non-metal by forming covalent bonds with chlorine. These covalent bonds are what make silicon tetrachloride a liquid at room temperature. Before we go on to the experiment, I should warn you that this is a very dangerous procedure as it uses chlorine and produces silicon tetrachloride, both of which are extremely toxic. Do not repeat this experiment under any circumstances. As I said before, silicon tetrachloride is an interesting molecule, but it also has an interesting reaction with water that I will explore in a later video. The setup and procedure that I used for this experiment comes from Wacker's Experimental Kit, and you can see this online through the link in the description. The setup that I am using is based off of the website setup, but I added a few modifications to fit my workspace. The first part of the apparatus is the chlorine generator. This consists of a two-neck round-bottom flask with a pressure-equalizing addition funnel on one neck and a one-hole rubber stopper fitted with a glass tube in the other neck. Next is the chlorine drying tube, which will be filled with sulfuric acid. The dry chlorine will then pass through more rubber tubing and end up in the reaction tube. A reaction tube is basically a test tube with the bottom cut off. You can order these from home science tools or make your own by removing the bottom off of a test tube if you have the right tools. The reaction tube will contain the silicon and it will be heated so that the silicon can react with the chlorine. The silicon tetrachloride vapors that are produced will travel out the other end of the reaction tube and be condensed in a condenser. They will then collect in a test tube which will be cooled in ice water. The collection setup that I am using consists of a broken vacuum distillation adapter with the test tube connected to the exhaust port. This setup happened to work for me, but you definitely don't have to use this same setup. Anyway, the excess chlorine and uncondensed silicon tetrachloride vapors will pass through a backflow trap and then a concentrated sodium hydroxide solution to neutralize it. Any chlorine that isn't neutralized by the sodium hydroxide will be directed to a centrifugal fan where it can be vented outside. Before adding the reagents to the system, make sure the condenser, reaction tube, vacuum adapter, and test tube are completely dry. The silicon tetrachloride will react with water and thus be destroyed, so we want to prevent this by drying everything thoroughly. You can dry the apparatus in an oven, or by washing it with acetone several times and allowing the acetone to evaporate. Also, make sure all ground glass joints are greased with sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid will not react with either the silicon tetrachloride or the chlorine, so it is a good chemical to grease the joints with. Now that the apparatus is set up, we can move on to the experiment. To the chlorine generation flask, add 12.7 grams of trichloroisocyanuric acid, or TCCA. Making sure that the stopcock on the addition funnel is closed, add 50 milliliters of 31.45% hydrochloric acid. Add some sulfuric acid to the chlorine drying tube as well. The exact amount isn't critical. Then, add 2.7 grams of silicon powder to the reaction tube. Try to spread it out in a thin line as opposed to a large pile. If your silicon comes in chunks instead of powder, then you will need to powderize it as this reaction only works with very fine silicon. However, I would recommend simply buying silicon powder instead of trying to crush up chunks of silicon. I found crushing up chunks of silicon to be extremely difficult and even after a lot of smashing and grinding, I couldn't get it fine enough for the reaction to occur at a reasonable rate. The amounts used here represent a massive excess of all of the reagents. 
I wanted to make 1.48 grams of SiCl4, or about 1 milliliter, which would only require 0.245 grams of silicon. I am using about a 1000% excess of silicon because this reaction is very inefficient and generally gives pretty low yields. Also, you may notice that we are generating an excess of chlorine. This is because we need to flush the apparatus with chlorine before beginning the reaction to remove any atmospheric air from the system. When everything is ready, begin slowly adding the hydrochloric acid to the TCCA. You should see a greenish-yellow gas produced as the HCl and TCCA react to form chlorine. You should also notice bubbling in the sodium hydroxide trap as air is being pushed out of the system. Continue flushing the apparatus with chlorine until the yellow color is clearly visible in every part of the apparatus. While you are doing this, check for leaks by holding damp blue litmus paper up to any joints. If the paper turns red, then chlorine is leaking out and you should stop generation immediately and ventilate the area. Make sure you have ice water flowing through the condenser and that the collection test tube is submerged in a beaker of ice water. Once the apparatus has been flushed with chlorine and the rate of chlorine generation is steady, begin the reaction by strongly heating the silicon in the reaction tube using a torch or Bunsen burner. The production of steam indicates that the silicon wasn't completely dry, and this will negatively affect our yield. After a few minutes of strong heating, the silicon should become red hot and you should see silicon tetrachloride vapor exiting the reaction tube. Continue heating until no more vapors are produced. The chemistry here is actually pretty straightforward. All we are doing is combining silicon and chlorine together in a synthesis reaction to make SiCl4. I think this experiment is a good reminder that sometimes simple reactions require very complex setups and procedures. When it looks like the reaction is done, turn off the chlorine generator and let everything cool down. The red spots on the reaction tube are iron chlorides produced from iron impurities in the silicon reacting with the chlorine. Most samples of silicon will contain some iron impurities, so don't be alarmed if this happens. In the test tube, you can see the beautiful liquid silicon tetrachloride product. When the test tube is removed from the ice bath, it is easy to see that it is yellow. Pure silicon tetrachloride should be clear, but mine is yellow likely because of iron impurities in the technical grade silicon powder that I used. It may also contain some dissolved chlorine. When I ran this reaction using reagent grade silicon that I had crushed up myself, the product was actually clear. So ideally for this reaction to work best, you'll want to find reagent grade silicon powder. I will use the product from this run in a future video to demonstrate its reaction with water. If you want to store your product, I would recommend using an ampule. If you store this compound in something like a vial, water will slowly react with it and eventually all of your product will be destroyed. However, ampules provide a completely airtight seal, so it will stay pure until you need to use it. Shown here is the ampule product from the run where I used reagent grade silicon. You can see that it is slightly cloudy, and this is because the ampules I used weren't completely dry, so the product reacted with the water to form this white solid. I also tried this reaction using the silicon that I synthesized myself. Despite the silicon clearly reacting with the chlorine, I didn't collect any product. However, I think this is simply because I didn't use enough silicon. As I showed before, you need a lot of silicon to get even a small amount of product because of how inefficient the reaction is. Well, that's it for this video. If you like what you saw, click that like button and share this video with your friends. Check out my channel The Chemistry Shack for more chemistry videos, and if you like them, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching!